hey guys welcome back on my youtube channel it's your boy troll in today's video we're gonna discuss another important topic which are the x moves x moves are basically spells that you can throw during the battle that have different effects but so far from what i saw they are also very hard to get we're gonna obviously uh, judge them and try to rank them in terms of what each of them does i'm pretty sure most of them will obviously you know be amazing same as the fighting souls every single one of them will be better in other content than other so again take it take this you know this is my personal opinion and i will rank them based on you know their actual effects but knowing the fact that they can be used in different options pvp pve one of them might be you know very bad in pvp but might be insane good in pve so again i'll just rank them on what do i think again we are way too far from being able to have them maxed out and everything so yeah anyway let's jump to the video and let's talk about and check all the x moves so far First of all, we're gonna have Chains of Guilt, which is basically the very first X move you're gonna get for free from the game. And what it does is why what whips the enemy target with the lowest lowest HP percentage, dealing damage equal to 275% of the highest attack of deployed fighters and reducing the target speed by 15 for 8 seconds. Now what's also interesting to notice is obviously this one is also a free to play that you're gonna get now whenever you go into the fight like this one needs eight seconds before you can use it this one needs 15 seconds i don't see where is it written when can you use it or what's the time before you can use it so i don't know if it's based on like I tried to move them or use just one of them. This one will it will has to be like 15 seconds, whatever happens before you can use it. And this one is always eight seconds. So I'm guessing every single card will have a specific time before you can use it, regardless of the placement, which one you use, etc. But anyway, chains of guilt. Again, you can level them up, you can buff them, etc. etc. Most of those most of those can be you can get them by basically summoning them so there's a gacha system to summon basically pieces of x moves or the moves themselves so far the only way to get those i found is either in the weekly quest or by buying a very special pack in the mall and i'm pre i think it was in the monthly one if we go here yeah for basically a hundred bucks you're gonna get 50 and that's it i don't i don't i never saw any other pack or any other way to get those and like i said also in the weekly quest in this chest in this chest you're gonna get one so when it comes to the x moves i think this is like the most end game content because it would just take so long to get them there is one that you can get within eight days wait 8 16 24 32 so yeah this one you can basically buy uh for 16 bucks uh, but you can only get it after eight days from starting the game because basically you can buy you can buy them basically once per day uh which is basically what i did this is literally the only money i'm still spending is i'm trying to get the vigilante x move uh, and you basically need to buy it eight times because you're gonna get four at a time and you need 30 to uh, collect it so tomorrow i'm gonna buy one more and on tuesday i will finally get the vigilante one now i don't know what happens when you buy the 20 bucks value does it basically mean that every day you can collect all of them or does it give you all of them instantly i don't know i don't want to test it i don't need it uh, anyway let's go to the x moves and see what they do so this one we all know about it it's a single attack damage with speed reduction and uh, i don't think there's anything else even if you level it up uh, hindering the damage there's a chance to increase hinder so the only thing if you're gonna level it up obviously you're gonna increase the damage and you're also gonna inflict hinder nothing else if you buff it so buff is the stars basically okay 
Uh, then we're gonna go to the Nature's Advent. This is basically a heal to all of your heroes, restores 5% of max HP to all friendly fighters four times in a row. Effect can be shared in co-op mode. And then if you level up, you need healed by the Severgan 10% uh, defense, increase the HP healed of 6%, increase the healing sticks to 5, you need healed by this, effect gain 10% for defense, and then increase the healing sticks to 6. So basically, the more you upgrade it, the more healing you have. Okay, so let's check now our tier list so me personally this one i really don't like it <laughs> the damage is shit <laughs> let's be honest i just really don't like it and sakura so far is great the healing is great but it's 50 seconds to unlock it and sometimes you're already dead or the, the fight is over so very rarely i actually use it uh, but so far, since it's the only one I have, I will put it in A. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> um, let's go uh, to the next one. So now we're going to go to Toxic Love. And that's basically the one I'm focusing on right now, as you can see. And why? Because I think it's quite strong. What does it do? There's a 40% chance to charm. Charm is basically the enemy fighter will be charmed for five seconds so basically he will be your ally for five seconds which means you can either block a combo because basically a character will be charmed so he won't attack you anymore and potentially not trigger the combo which is very good i think um but also it will do some damage i don't know if the character can use a combo on the other enemies like if you use your own combo but just having that uh charm which basically i don't know let's say someone's about to use his combo three or something and then you just charm him and cancel it so i think it's very strong that's why i'm going for it now also it will do some damage and then basically by leveling leveling it up you're just gonna increase the time of charm okay after the charm effect ends the depth reduction effects on that will last six okay so yeah basically leveling it up it's just uh, upgrading the charm damage or duration but for me this is very good like i said to be tested but if you can actually block a combo combination or a super combo or whatever i think it's super super good so for me, it will go into S. Again, I will show you the tier list at the end, don't worry. Even the previous video for X move, if you go to the very end of the video, you will have the tier list that I built. Uh, then, then we're gonna go, let's go to, I oh know, actually the next one will be this one. Then we go to Crazy Potato. So, restores 5 HP. 5% of max HP to multiple allies with their range and grants them a shield equal to 10% of max HP lasts 8 seconds. So it will be less healing than Sakura because Sakura also restores 5% of max HP to all friendly fighters about 4 times. So basically it will be 20% of max HP instead of 5 but you also get a shield with this one but then increase the shield to -na 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 -na. the shield cannot be dispelled and shield dispels a debuff upon gaining a shield so i don't know uh, i think it depends if you need only pure healing the sakura ones is obviously stronger if you need a dispel this one will be better um but you know is the shield that great since you have heroes that can execute or you have an execute basically in the game the heal is way better than the shield because even if you have a shield your hp still be under 15 percent so i think it's not as strong as the sakura one unless i'm missing something right maybe it's also a question of the like the stats you're gonna get because obviously the sakura one should be lower i mean oh, now it's leveled up oh also take effect of all fighters takes effects of all fighters does it take effect on all fighters? Yeah, it also takes. Okay. Uh, next one, we're going to have the Mad Ryu one. So, Breath of Rage. Uh, all fighters lose 10% of their current HP and gain 10% of attack and 10% of crit rate for 8 seconds. If you want to just go in and one-shot everything, this will be great. 
but on a long-term duration i just don't think it's really good and uh, because if you check here um so this would be basically active for a long time but the simple fact that you're gonna lose 10 percent of your hp is like if this like i don't know how long you're gonna have to wait for this one to launch it again they don't put the timer on how long you have to wait till you can launch it but if you can't launch it straight away in the game i just don't think uh, in the fight i don't think it's good uh, against the boss maybe but do you really want to lose so much uh, like do you really want to lose hp and then end game you're still gonna have healers on so on or some sort of healing i guess so i'm really quite confused mm, increase the duration then while well, the is most active for everyone is missing the damage condition increase now this will be obviously super strong on bison 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 or bison sorry um so on bison this will be super strong because obviously he will be missing always a lot of hp so his passive will be insanely like it will do a lot of damage but then all of your allies will lose hp and when they say all fighters does it also mean enemies because it's all fighters it's not all allies or all allied heroes so i don't know i'm not as excited about this one as i thought i would be to be honest uh so yeah i will rank again the tier list is coming next one is uh epic one so we have tanuki will so rolls into the battlefield striking all enemy fighters multiple times each strike dealing damage equal to 55 percent of the team's average attack with a six percent chance to take one armor break and then obviously you're gonna increase the percentage you're gonna increase the chance for armor break all at the start of the x move all i factors gain 10 speed and 8 bonus damage this is really good but again this is for sure not against bosses because this is only once it's maybe pvp or campaign you just go in and one shot increase damage to 65 percent and increase the speed bonus to 20 and the damage bonus to 50 percent okay and um, i don't know just 55 percent sounds like literally no damage like already this one with 265 percent right now where i am in the game it's almost no damage because i don't think it crits i never saw this like as a crit so i don't think 55 percent will be that much like i don't think <laughs> this will be a lot so this one same i'm not really excited about it but again to be tested but from 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 what i see i don't i don't i don't know i really don't know but yeah the three star buff is actually good though uh then we're gonna go to crimson lotus flame so deal flame damage equal to 200 percent of the team's average attack to all five wait are there multiple takes here strikes enemy fight with multiple i ah, does strike multiple times and each strike dealing equal to 55 percent so it depends how many times it strikes it right as well because it also means you have multiple chances to apply the armor break that's changed that that changes few things i'll put it here uh, let's go to this one though so this will well this is uh if you have a burn fire team this just i mean easy right <laughs> uh attack to all fighters on the field each strike Tells of image array to all fighters on the field. Each strike has a deal flame damage equal to 200 of the team's average attack to all fighters. Each strike, so there's multiple strikes of 200%. That's interesting and to, to be tested. And uh, chance to inflict one burn for 10 seconds. Obviously, burn is insane for fire team. The more burns you have, the higher damage you have from your fire teams uh you're gonna increase the damage you're gonna increase the chance to play a burn addition increase the flame damage dealt by allies fighters so yeah this card will be a must have for a fire team basically and increase damage to for 200 uh, addition increase the flame damage dealt by yeah this is like a must have card for a fire damage so if you have a fire team this is a s card x move but if you don't play a fire team or your fire team is not like a main team that you're using 
it's it's not that great but let's see the last remaining card for now we'll put it here and then we're gonna check the well the pay to win card this is a hundred percent pay to win card because you can't even get it from here as you can see you can't choose it the only way so far apparently is to buy it so let's check it <coughs> Deals damage equal to 180% of the highest attack of deployed fighters to all enemies and leaves a drone behind. While the drone is present, it will fire a barrage whenever an allied fighter uses a skill. So, four times if you do the full combo from my understanding to be tested or either just once if they're talking about super, super combo. Dealing damage equal to 55% of the highest attack of the deployed fighter and filling the super combo gush by 50. This is actually very good. Now the question is, does it mean that you can only use Vigilante once in a fight? But again, it's not like you're going to use it multiple times. But if it's only once, then it's not that great against bosses maybe? Or no, I, it actually, well, the drone will remain. So you will do this damage and you will increase your combo by 50 every single time. So it can actually be better against bosses. Let's see, increase barrage damage to 60. Each drone, each drone, ah, each drone attack. Okay. Also feels the super, okay, never mind. <laughs> each drone increases the crit rate of allied fighters. So you can have multiple drones. Okay, like if you can have multiple drones, this becomes stupidly, insanely crazy broken. Each drone increases the crit rate of allied fighters by 7%. And when an allied fighter performs a combo, the drone has a 35% chance to strap fire, dealing damage equal to the highest attack of the fighters. I think. Oh, okay. So since they say combo here, it means that this one is just super combo. Yeah, because it would be just stupidly broken if it was every single combo point. But so far, for me, this is like the strongest one. Interesting. Let me know in the comments what do you think. Uh, in regards to the tier list, for, so for me, the charm is the strongest. If you can stop a combo block, an entire team uh, just wasting their super combo, whatever, I think that's the strongest. The drone one so far seems like the highest damage and overall the best use. Uh, Sakura has the best healing, the potato I think is worse than Sakura. Again, this one will be here if you have a fire team, if not overall it's still good. Uh, she, her damage is just not that great. Him, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not convinced by it and him, I just I, I think it's not good. Uh, but yeah guys that's my list let me know in the comments what do you think about it and as always make sure to like follow, and subscribe plenty of videos are coming out discord description everything in the comment below description below of the video and i will see you in the next one so make sure to be here so make sure to subscribe to know about it ciao <laughs>